Hi, everyone. Welcome to part three of my driver series, where I will be going over some really important concepts when performing the downswing. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like. And if you are visiting my channel for the first time, please subscribe to see more golf related content. Okay, so to start things off, I'm just going to quickly review some concepts that I talked about in part two when it comes to your backswing with the driver, just so that we know where we have to initiate the downswing from. So in part two, what I mentioned was since we have the, your head essentially further behind the ball because your stance is wider and the ball position is more forward, we talked about how we have to have enough rotation, but then also at the same time be able to gauge whether or not we have enough extension as well. So we, if I draw that line kind of straight up from where the ball is, if I'm demonstrating too much extension, you can see that my upper back kind of moves more into that ball line. If I'm demonstrating not enough extension, then my upper back is going to basically be too far away from that ball line. So if I do the right blend of rotation with extension, my chest is pointed up a little bit, but you can see that my upper back is just a little bit away from that ball line. Okay, so there's not too much space and there's not like zero amounts of space or I'm not leaning ahead of the ball. So once we can get set to that position, then we can start to think about some really important concepts of what to do in the downswing. So starting off with the face on view, I'm gonna go over two really important concepts and positions that you can look out for, and then also one key position that you can look out for from the side view. So the first concept I wanna to talk to you guys about is the movement of your head in the downswing. So when a player gets to the top of their backswing, the worst drivers of the golf ball will tend to move their heads the most forward when they perform their downswing, when they start the downswing. Now, the reason why we don't want that to happen with drivers is because when you do that, it's gonna encourage the swing path to become more degrees from out to in. And when you do that, then the angle of attack will be tend to be more degrees downwards, okay? So we don't wanna do that either because since the ball is teed up, we wanna do things to encourage the club to come in more level to the ground, if not slightly upwards on the golf ball. Now, if you watch the best drivers of the golf ball, you'll notice that when they make their downswing, their head is gonna either remain relatively in the same place, or the head's actually gonna move further away from where they started at address. Now, this is happening because when they make their downswing, they have to ensure that their weight still moves forward, but they're gonna be extending their bodies at a little bit of a faster rate in comparison to an iron, okay? Now, if I were to draw a circle on my lead knee and a circle over my lead shoulder, you'll notice that if my head goes backwards as my weight and my hips go forward, the movement of my lead shoulder will tend to be more upwards, okay? Now, with an iron, we know that when we make our downswing, that the lead shoulder and the lead knee have to go more forwards typically, okay? And that's gonna actually encourage you to hit more down. But with a driver, if we want to make sure that the head stays back behind the golf ball, or maybe even slightly more away from where it started at address, then what you can look for is to ensure that your lead shoulder moves a little bit, a little bit higher in relation to where it started. Now, if I play uh, a few swings of some pros here from the face on view, and I draw that ball line, um, a head, uh, a circle around their head, and then also the circle, the same circles on their lead shoulder and lead knee, you'll see that as they make their downswing, the head is going to typically move further back away from where they started. And as they get closer into impact, you see that the lead shoulder doesn't move forward. It actually gets higher, just a little bit higher than uh, where the, the lead shoulder started at address. Now, it's really important that I mention that if you are physically trying to move your head backwards or just further away from where it started, that you still have to make sure that your weight moves forward. Okay, you do not want to move your head backward with your weight also kind of stuck on your trail foot. Okay, that's, uh, that's actually going to encourage you to kind of hit the ground first and also maybe get the, the swing path more degrees from out to in again. So you still need to shift your weight left, but what you're doing is you're actually making a, a, a more of a separation between where your hip moves and where your upper body moves. Okay, and that's in, in other words, that just means that your, as your weight goes forward and your hips go forward, you're just going to be extending or bending backwards 
um, at a little bit of a faster rate. So a great drill that you guys can do to kind of get a sense and feel for this is if you place like a door frame, um, just kind of where the ball would be, but you'd have a bit of a space or um, actually you could have your, your head maybe leading up against that wall or that door frame. When you make your downswing, you want to feel like as your weight still goes forward, you can get your head to move a little bit away from that door frame. Okay, so if I draw that line uh, right up against the edge of where my head is um, at address, when I make my backswing and I make my downswing, my hips and weight are still going forward, but my head is moving a little bit away from that, from that line. So once you perform the drill and you have a good feel for it, you can make little small swings with the driver and just try to apply that feeling. You can see when I make some small swings here that as my hips go forward, as I get closer to, to impact in my downswing, I move my hips and weight forward, but I'm purposely trying to get my head to move further away um, from where it started. Okay, so again, if I just do a small swing, well, you can see my hips and weight go forward, but my head actually moved a little bit further back um, from where it was at address. So the next concept that I want you to look out for is just about where the longest point of your, of your golf swing should be formed with the driver. Now with an iron, we know that since we're trying to hit down on it, the longest point of your golf swing, which is where the left arm and the shaft will form a straight line, is typically after impact. Okay, So that would signify that you've hit the, hit the ball with the shaft forward, and then immediately kind of after post-impact, that's when everything is in a straight line. But with driver, again, since we're trying to do things to encourage the the, the club to come in more level to the ground or slowly upwards on it, we actually want to make sure that the longest point of your golf swing is more or less closer to impact, okay, if not right at impact. So the concept that I just talked about before this, um, if you're able to kind of get your weight forward, head to move back slowly, that'll also encourage the radius to move back closer to impact. But those players that tend to get their, their head moving forward, um, and they swing over the top, they tend to actually also extend out the radius too early. And then kind of just before they make impact, they kind of break the wrist down, break the arms down, or change posture in, a, in an attempt to kind of swing upwards on it. Okay, so as long as you can focus on the, the concept I talked about before, weight still forward, hips still forward, head moving slightly more away from it, that should also kind of really help you to get that radius formed right at impact. We don't ever want... The, the, you'd hit uh, the, the ball with the shaft forward with the driver, or we don't want the radius to form too early and you to break down the radius prior to impact either. All right, so now from the side view, I just want to go over one key position that you guys can look out for, especially if you enjoy uh, filming yourself and you want to be able to give yourself some good feedback. So when their lead arm reaches close to parallel to the ground or just kind of past parallel, you want to pay attention to where the shaft is in relation to your trail arm. Okay, more specifically, the bicep of your trail arm. So if you were able to get the shaft to intercept close to the middle of the bicep, that is probably your best um, way in knowing that you're probably going to deliver the club head into the ball in the right direction. Now, the players that would swing the club more over the top, you would see that the shaft would intersect higher than the bicep, probably closer to the shoulder, maybe even through the neck if you're really, really, really steep. Okay, so you want to make sure that when you come down, you're either through the center of the bicep or even slightly lower than the bicep is fine. All right. Now, you'll also notice that when a player comes in more over the top, okay, you want to imagine the distance between the, where the club head is and the ball. There's like less distance between the club head and the ball, so you have less time to generate speed. Okay, and obviously, besides that, you're, you're going to encourage, obviously, your, yourself to swing way more over the top and, and more degrees from out to in, which is really bad for directional control and also power. But when you make your downswing and you get the, the shaft to kind of go through the middle of the bicep or just lower than the bicep, you can see that the distance between the club end and the ball is much greater. So you'll, you'll tend to have much more time to generate speed as you get closer into impact. And I think that's a really great way to think about how to transition from the top down with the driver is when you want to make your down so you want to feel as though the club head stays as far away from the ball as you can before you get to impact instead of it feeling really close to um, the ball too soon in transition okay so if you can feel that and you feel like you're keeping the club head like as far away from the ball as you can 
for as long as you can in, in, in the downswing, just kind of up to this point, then you're most likely going to keep your hands further behind you. The shaft is going to shallow up more and you'll be closer to hitting that position of being of the shaft being in the middle of the bicep or just slightly below it. And you'll also notice that I placed like kind of an object on the mat here. Um, and this is just another visual guide um, and physical guide of the, of the path or the direction that the club head should be delivered. Now, it's kind of on a slight angle just so that I can ensure that my path is just a little bit from in to out. Okay, so if I go any out to in, obviously I can touch that noodle and it'll give me some instant feedback. So this is a really great drill. Um, just if you're on the range or you're even hitting balls at home in a, in a simulator or something, but this can ensure that, again, you, if you can miss the noodle and get the club coming in delivered a little bit on the inside, then that will also encourage the shaft to kind of stay behind you more uh, for you to shallow up the shaft just so you can get um, into that position. Thank you guys so much for watching. Now, if you have any confusion about whatever I talked about, you can leave a comment down below. Be sure to follow me on my Instagram at Jonathan K. Moss if you want to inquire about my online lessons. I will also have a link to my website in the description box below as well, just so you can see all of the details. If you have some extra time, I would encourage you guys to watch this video next, and it'll just go over five ways on how to eliminate your slice with the driver.